what I'm talking about. Wait. Okay, now, from the beginning. Simeon back there waving at me, so hey Simeon, good to see you this morning. Uh, w- my name is Brian Mosley, I serve as a lead pastor here, and thank you so much for being here today. I want to welcome all of you who are uh, regular tenders and all of our guests here, and those who may be tuning in on YouTube, welcome to you as well. I'm excited to continue uh, today with the series that we're calling The Names of God. Everybody say that with me this morning, The Names of God. Okay, you guys have had your coffee, you're ready to study God's Word, right? All right, say it with me, The Names of God. All right, <clears throat> before we dive in today, though, I want to, I believe it's important for, for me, just as a pastor of this church, just to love on you and to appreciate you, and so every, every chance I get, I just want to say thank you. So thank you for your, your, your faithful uh, and, and oftentimes sacrificial support of our church. Thank you for your giving financially. Thank you for serving with your gifts and your talents. Thank you for giving of your time. And there's amazing things that's happening this year that we're planning on doing. We're, we're going to do some outreaches. We're going to upgrade some facility things. And we're going to um, uh, just begin to move forward even more as a church this year. And I just want to say thank you for being a part of that. Thank you for investing your time, your talents, your treasures into that. And I want to share this scripture with you before we start our study. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The Apostle Paul encourages his, uh, his uh, church, the fellow believers in, in Corinth, and he says this, Therefore, all my brothers and all my sisters, stand firm. Stand firm. Don't waver to and fro. Stand firm. Let nothing move you. Look what he says. Always give yourself, give yourselves fully. Not, not halfway, but fully. And this is what I'm telling you. Thank you for it. Thank you for giving yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Because why? Because, because you know that your labor in the Lord is never in vain. So stand firm and thank you. For being here, thank you for investing uh, with us to see the church of Jesus Christ move forward and being able to uh, touch our community and our world in an even greater way. So thank you. I want to sh- share that with you. And uh, everybody said amen to that. Okay. So now we're going to continue on in our teaching series called The Names of God. And somebody asked me last week just in passing, why, why, pastor, are we studying the names of God? Can't we just call him God and be good? Okay, well, what, what about, um, I, want you to, I want you to see this just as we begin, okay? The names of God are revealed by God in the scripture, and they're given to us as a gift. Why? So that we can know him better. So that we can have a deeper understanding and a more full relationship with him. I put this up on uh, the, the screen, but take the, jot this down if you're taking notes with me. If you're not taking notes with me, jot this down. Uh, and it says this, the names of God reveal his nature, his character, and his attributes. The names of God reveal who he is, what he's like, how he behaves, what he, what he feels, what he thinks, how he engages with humanity. The names of God reveal so much about who God is. And because he's given us his names that he's revealed in scripture, it's important for us to take the time just to pause and to really study what the scripture reveals are his names. Amen. So the names of God help to reveal his nature, his character and his attributes. And let me be honest with you, the the more that we know God, 
the more we will love him. The more that we know of his, of his ways and the more we see his beauty, the more we will fall in love with him, the deeper our commitment will be to him. The more that we know him, anybody want to know God a little bit more? The more that we know him, the more we will love him. And isn't that the part, that the great commandment, right? Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all of your strength. Isn't that the goal of knowing him with everything that we have within us? So it's important that our thoughts about God are consistent with the word of God. It's important that our thoughts are, are true and founded upon his word and not just based upon our feelings or our circumstances or what the culture will tell us or what the devil will try to make us believe about God. No, it's important that our thinking about God is accurate and that it aligns with the word of God. Amen? I love what A.W. Tozer said, and I put this in your notes. He said this, what comes to our minds... When we think about God, is the most important thing about us. Why would Tozer say a word like this? It's because how we think about God helps to shape how we relate to him. Let me, let me explain a little bit more. As Christians, we've been called to a love-based relationship with God. And Jesus said we're to love him Remember, with all of our hearts, with all of our souls, with all of our minds, with all of our strength, everything that's within us, we're called to love him and we're called to deny ourselves, right? To crucify our flesh and to follow Jesus. We're called to obey him no matter what the cost, no matter if we understand it fully or not. No, we're called to be 100% sold out to following Jesus Christ. This is what we're called to as believers. And honestly, I think that sometimes what we think about God, if it's incorrect, if it's inaccurate, according to Scripture, can be more of a hindrance than a help to us. Let me explain this to you. Um, just to illustrate it in your notes, I've listed three uh, common misconceptions that people sometimes have about God. Let me give you the first one. It's this, the absent landlord. Some people think about God and they think about uh, he's, a, he's an absent landlord. Let me explain this a little bit more. Some of you may live in an apartment. Some of you may live in a rental home uh, and you may not have a very responsive owner or a landlord. Anybody, can anybody relate to that? Okay, I can. Uh, he or she owns the property but rarely checks on it. Rarely checks on the condition, and, and if you reach out to ask for maintenance, they, they rarely, if ever, follow through and fix the problem. And that's the way many, many people sometimes look at God. They see God, and they, they believe that he created the universe. He created the heavens and the earth and the stars and everything. But after that, God now basically takes a hands-off approach. Okay? So if you have such a view of God, in that, in that way, God really doesn't do very much in this life. He really is not very active. Yeah, he may have created the world in the beginning, but after that, you know, he's simply not active. He's simply not working anymore in today's world. And to go further, he's simply not working anymore in my world. Or in your world, and assuredly, he was, would never involve himself to answer our prayers or be attentive to what we're going through. So this view of God is, is wrong, and it's skewed, and it's wrong from the very beginning. And if your view of God is wrong from the very beginning, how many of you have ever taken a wrong turn on a road trip? Before, okay? Now, if you take a wrong turn at the beginning of your road trip, it's going to lead you way away from your intended destination. So, our thoughts about God need to be accurate and line up with the scripture even from the beginning, okay? So, the second one is this not only is he sometimes viewed as 
uh, the absent landlord, but he can be viewed as the doting grandfather. Doting, it means like going overboard, like you can't, the, you, you look at something so affectionately and so uh, with so much admiration that they can do absolutely nothing wrong, okay? This is how a lot of people uh, conceive of God. He's like that grandpa who dotes on his grandchildren. The last thing that he would ever want to do is discipline us for any of our sins in his eyes, we can do absolutely nothing wrong. We are just simply the perfect children. And this view of God, let me be honest with you, is pretty widespread in the church. God isn't really interested in how we live. We, we should just try to be relatively nice to each other. God wants us to be happy and to feel really good about ourselves and to have lots of self-esteem. And in this view, God is not really holy. And he's not really serious about our sin. And the last thing that God would ever do is to discipline us, to correct us, to instruct us, or to make us a little uncomfortable. After all, God's more concerned about my happiness than my holiness. Right? This is a misconception about God. He can be viewed upon as the doting Grandpa. And thirdly, I would tell you this. This is a misconception. He, he's viewed upon as the, the cosmic superhero. Okay? How many of you guys like superheroes? Man, I'm a Spider-Man fan. I love Thor. I love all those guys. Batman. Super, okay. Uh, but, but have you ever heard someone refer to God as the man upstairs? You ever heard, you ever heard that? I have, and I've actually said that on occasion incorrectly. And, but, but while this phrase is usually spoken out of recognition for, for the need of God's help, it kind of suggests this view of God that is far too much like us. Far too much like us. This sort of picture of God in which he is depicted as a stronger, smarter, a uh, bigger version of a human being turns God into this superhero kind of deity like Thor or Spider-Man. Now, I've, I'm a fan of Spider-Man, but there's nothing about Spider-Man that inspires me to deny myself, to give up everything, and to follow him with my life. <clears throat> you see, God is described in the Bible as not some upgraded version of, hum of a human being, or not even an amazing, powerful angel. No, as we're going to study today from the scripture, God is the ultimate source and the creator and the sustainer of everything. And we see from the scripture, he is over all, he is through all, he is in all. His ways are not our ways, they're so much higher. His thoughts are are not our thoughts. They're so much greater as the heavens are higher than the earth. God is beyond all comparison. So I want us to zero in on this today. Who is God? And as he is revealed in the scripture, who is he really? Not our ideas, not what we get from this place or that place or our own feelings, but who is he really according to the scripture? The Lord God said this through the prophet Isaiah in the Old Testament, if you have your notes, follow along with me. Uh, this is Isaiah chapter 40, starting in verse 25. He says this, To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal? Says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Just pause right there and think about this. One of the, uh, this is a side note. It is estimated that there's over a billion stars just in our Milky Way galaxy. Have you ever thought about this before? How vast creation is. And beyond our galaxy, there are, there are estimated over a billion other galaxies 
in the universe. And that's just the known universe. That's just what we can see with these powerful telescopes and things. But, and I'm sure those numbers are just scratching the surface. But I, and Isaiah goes on to say this. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you complain? Any, any complainers in the room? Don't raise your hand. Okay. All right. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded by my God. You see, many of us complain. Many of us sometimes murmur to God. And many of us sometimes say, God, do you not see me? Is my life hidden from your view? Where are you, God? If you are who you say you are, then why don't you do something in my life? And sometimes we have this, this complaining spirit and we wonder, does God even see me? Does God even care? And many of us feel like our lives may not even matter at all to God. And listen, I, I want to share this with you. I think we can all relate to this. It's up on the screen. It says this, how easy it is to believe that in the infinite power of God and at the same time to feel that he is unable to meet our personal needs. How easy it is to believe in this almighty creator who has all the power in his hand. We can believe that wholeheartedly, but is he the God who knows me? Is he the God who can care about me? Is he the God, even though he's so great, but is he great in my life? And we can fail to believe that, and we can fail to know. And this is, let's continue what Isaiah says. Do you not know? I want you to hear this this morning. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Listen to this. Underline these words. The Lord is the everlasting God. The creator of the ends of the earth. Circle that word creator. That's what we're going to talk more about as we go on. He will not grow tired. Or weary. How many of you know God is not a human being? He does not grow tired. Anybody ever grow tired? Anybody ever grow weary? Okay, oh, I got good news for you. God, the, our everlasting creator, does not. And he is always on the move. He is always working in your life. Even when you take a day off, God is working. Even when you're asleep at night, God is working. He is always working in his creation. The re this rebellious and complaining nation of Israel who received this word from Isaiah needed to be reminded of who God actually is. And that their God was the all-powerful creator, the generous provider, their strong and safe refuge and their tower, their peace. And their defender, they needed to be reminded that their God was strong and powerful and able to help them in their time of need. How many of us sometimes forget how big our God actually is? And we need the word of the Lord to come to us to remind us that he is an all-powerful creator. And that he is attentive to what is going on in our lives. Sometimes, too, we can wander from the Lord. We can begin to murmur and complain in unbelief and doubt against him. Or we can become so familiar with the words of the scripture that it begins to lose its, its, its life in our lives that we actually will begin to forget who God really is. We forget that he is the everlasting, that he is omniscient, that he is gracious, that he is the creator God, and we forget what he is truly capable of. Beloved, I want to just remind you here this morning with a word of encouragement, and it's this, he is your everlasting creator God. 
He is your Father. He knows the end from the beginning. He has ordained every day of your life. He is our eternal provider who never gets weary. He always bears us up on His arms of love. And He is all-powerful. He is omniscient. He knows everything. His, his ways are unsearchable, unsearchable, but they are always good. And they are always perfect, even if we cannot understand them. Yet He sees the, the sparrow, and He feeds the sparrow. He sees the lily that, that needs to be watered and cared for by His hand. My friends, never let us forget who God is. God is the same. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is our everlasting God, the creator of the earth and all the heavens that are in, this, that are in the universe. And let us never forget, he never grows weary or tired pursuing and loving you. He's got an amazing purpose for your life. And he never gives up on you. In his love for, for just a few minutes, let's try to let's transition. And I want us to zero in on the very first name of God that is revealed in the scripture. OK, Elohim. Everybody say that with me. Elohim. Say it like you mean it. Elohim. This means the strong, powerful creator. Jot that down if you're taking notes with me. The strong and powerful creator. Creator. This is the very first name of God, and it's used more than 2,500 times in the Bible. 32 times in just this, the first chapter of Genesis. Most scholars believe that this word Elohim derives from the word El, which in turn comes from the word for strong. Strong and powerful. Specifically, this name, again, means that he is the strong and the powerful creator God. Let's read in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 2. This is where we first see the word Elohim. It says, in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, and darkness was over the face of of the deep. Can anybody relate to that? Has you have you ever felt like your life was formless and empty and in darkness? <clears throat> and he says this that darkness was over the deep, and the spirit of Elohim was hovering over the waters. Just want you to notice this as we look at this verse. The Bible simply and straightforwardly declares that the world did not create itself. The world did not come about by chance. It was created by God, Elohim, who by definition is eternal. And eternal means he has no beginning and he has no end. He has always existed. Now, if we truly believe Genesis chapter 1 and this, these first verses, we will probably have no problem Believing the rest of the Bible. Because if God is big enough to have created the heavens and the earth, then he is big enough to do all the rest that the Bible says he has done and is still doing. So as we learn about the word God in this scripture, Elohim, in these verses, it's the, it's the ancient word Elohim. Everybody say Elohim. You didn't know you were going to have a Hebrew lesson today at church, did you? Okay, so say it with me one more time. Elohim, the strong and powerful creator God. <clears throat> the im, the I am, at the end of Elohim is a plural suffix. I want you to think about this. This is similar to the word cherub, like the angel, the cherub, becoming cherubim. It comes from singular to plural. Or the word seraph being seraphim. Now the cool part is, although this name Elohim is plural, it is, it is often used as a singular noun. 
Now, are you tracking with me? I want you to think about this with me. So here, even in creation, even in the very beginning, we see that God is one, but yet he is somehow plural. Now, although the concept of the Trinity isn't fully developed or disclosed right here in Genesis, we know as we study through the whole Bible that God, who is eternal in nature, exists and has always existed in three persons. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Are you still following with me? We see the concept of the, of the Trinity this is important to understand, but we see the concept of the Trinity throughout Scripture. One example is in the New Testament at the baptism of Jesus. We see God the Father speaking over Jesus, saying, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. You see Jesus the Son actually being baptized. You see the Holy Spirit, what? Descending down like a, like a dove. You see the Trinity all in this one place. Another example would be uh, when Jesus gave the great commission to the church. He called on the three members of the Trinity. And this is in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. He said, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, te teaching them to obey everything and baptizing them in the name of who? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One of the most clearest passages is, been, is written by the Apostle Paul. Uh, if you're interested, you can find it in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. It says, Paul said this, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, comma, and the love of God, comma, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God the Father sent the Son. So that we could be saved from our sins. And now the Holy Spirit has sealed our salvation. It's the Trinity that makes redemption even possible. So Elohim, even in creation, there's one God, but it's plural. And we see that he has eternally existed in three persons. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's kind of deep. Everybody still with me? Okay, all right, let's continue to read verses uh, 3 through 5 in Genesis 1. It says this, And God said, Elohim said, Let there be light. And there was light. And Elohim saw that the light was good. And he separated the light from the darkness. Elohim called the light Day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Now, here we see Elohim, that strong and powerful creator God, personally interacting with his creation. He's not absent, he's not disengaged. No, he is working, he is fully involved, he is, he is interacting personally, he, and he has always been, and he is now, and he will always be that way in the future. Don't think that God is hands off. He is very much working and active in this world and in your life. Look at verse 26. It says, then Elohim said, let us make mankind in our Image. Do you see again the pluralness of what he's saying? He said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the, in the birds of the sky and over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So Elohim created mankind in his own image. In the image of Elohim, he created them, male and female. He created them. God, Elohim, blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. 
Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. What a powerful picture of the beginning. Of how Elohim, the creator, strong God, created the heavens and the earth. He created all of those elements. You should take time to study Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. They're so important. And they help us to understand who God really is. And to help us to understand that we are part of his glorious and awesome creation. So what do we learn about Elohim here. Elohim, remember, he is a strong, powerful creator God. He is not bound by time or space. Elohim is transcendent, which means he is distinct from everything in creation. And Elohim is personal. This is really important. He's personal because we see in those scriptures that we just read that Elohim said... He speaks. Elohim saw. He can see. He has vision. Elohim separated. He does a work. He engages with, with uh, his creation. And, he said, and it says that God, Elohim, called. He can call. And he does still call. God is not an impersonable, impersonal force. No, he personally interacts with. With his creation. And Elohim is plural. Although it's used as a singular noun many times. The word itself is plural. Which hints at the truth of the Trinity. So let me encourage you today. Your God is big. He is strong. He is powerful. He created everything that we see. And everything that we don't see. And if you're here today and you're just checking out Christianity, you're checking out God, you're checking out what, it, what is the Bible all about, what is the Bible all about, I want to just encourage you that you can personally know your God. You can personally meet your maker, so to speak, in this life. You can know him. You can have an authentic, vibrant, wonderful, love-based relationship with your creator, God. He wants you to talk to him. He wants to know you. He wants to be known by you. He wants a relationship. And he wants you to come to the place where you're so convicted of your sin that you say, I'm turning away. I'm repenting of my sin and I'm confessing the Savior, Jesus Christ, to forgive me of my sins so that I can be reconciled, brought back together with my creator, God. He wants a relationship with each of us. He loves us so much. And I want to just share these four foundational statements with you. If you're taking notes, jot, this, jot these down. This first one is this. Elohim made everything, including you and me. Speaking of Christ, the Apostle Paul said this in Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. He said, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. Look at this. All things have been created through him and for him. Elohim, the one God who eternally exists in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit created everything, including you and me. The second thing I would tell you is this. Elohim created me and you with a design and a purpose. With a design and a purpose. Now, some of you may not believe that, but he did. He intentionally created you with a with a. Uh, intentional design and an on purpose purpose. <laughs> Can I say that? No matter how old you are, 
no matter how young you are, no matter if you're a man or a woman, no matter uh, if you're black, white, brown, purple, no matter what your income level, no matter who you voted for in the last election, no matter what your religious background is or, or lack thereof, no matter what you've been going through in your life, what you're going through right now, or what you may go through in the days ahead, I want you to know this, friends, that your creator God loves you. And he, you have been made with a unique design and a God-given purpose. I want that to sink in. You've been made with a unique design and a purpose from God. In other words, you're not here on this earth by accident. Do you think God makes accidents? No, he does not. You are not junk. You are not trash. Do you think God makes junk? Do you think that he makes trash? No, he made you. You are not damaged goods. You are adored and prized by your creator. You are made in his image and you are highly valued you, he made you to love him and to be loved by him and he created you to make a difference in this world did you know did you know that i want you to see these words from ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 it says this for we the church the people of god we are god's what handiwork. One translation says masterpiece. We are his handiwork or masterpiece created in Christ Jesus. Why? To do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So Elohim has created you with a unique design and a divine purpose for your life. Let me ask you this. Are you seeking what that design and purpose is are you asking him what is my purpose what is my how did you wire me because God I want to make a difference and I want to be able to walk in those good works that you've created for me even before time began I want to know that I want to just stir you up church begin to think about what is your design and what is your purpose? Because you're not trash and you're not here by accident. He's got a plan for you and he loves you. And somebody needs to hear that this morning. <clears throat> Next is this. Elohim created me for a relationship. He wants to know us. And he wants, to, he wants us to know him. As I shared with you earlier, my theme scripture for this entire year is found in Mark chapter 12, verse 30. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all of your strength. If church, we could be anything, if we could do anything, let us be people who love him with everything that we have in our hearts. Let's don't be distracted by this or that or what's happening in our lives. But my one and sole purpose is to love God. To love Him. And I know that He works all things together for those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. My God, He is strong. And he is powerful. And he is our creator God. And if we can do anything in this life, let us love him with everything that we have. Because why? Elohim wants a relationship with you. He wants to know you. And he wants to be known by you. Let me go ahead and invite the worship team up. <clears throat> the last thing is this. And I believe the Holy Spirit gave, gave me this message for somebody in particular right now for this moment right here because you need to know this. Elohim can bring order out of chaos. He can bring order out of chaos and you can rely on his power when you face difficulties in your life. 
just like we saw in creation where it was formless, right? And it was dark. And there was nothing good about what was happening there. God stepped in and he said, let there be light. He brought, he brought order. He brought light into the darkness. He brought order into the chaos. And somebody here this morning needs to hear that word. I know because you feel like your life has just been thrown into chaos. But you need to know that God is who he says he is. And that he loves you and he can turn that around. He is the God who can turn your situation around and he can take that chaos that feels formless and dark and he can mold it into something beautiful. And when it's all done and when his process is through, he will look at it and he will say, it is good. It is good. So right now your life may look like it's chaotic, but you just hang in there. And you keep trusting him, and you keep learning and pressing into who he actually is, and he will transform that chaos into beautiful, into something beautiful. Amen? <clears throat> this is who our God is. He is Elohim. He is the strong and powerful creator, eternally existing as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he is able to bring your chaos back in to his order. So would you stand with me, please? Some of you need to have Jeremiah 32, verse 17, as your verse for this season. This is your verse for this season. If I've just spoken the word of God to you and you're going through that chaotic moment, you need to hang on to this verse about God. Let's look at it in Jeremiah 32. It says, Ah, sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Let, read this part with me. Nothing is too hard for you. Did you say it again? And just look up to heaven and say it to God. Nothing is too hard for for you. I want you to believe that this morning. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Whatever you're facing in this life, whatever turmoil is going on, whatever storm may be riding through in your life right now, there is nothing too hard for God. And I want to invite you today, encourage you, urge you today, put your full faith in Him. Put your full trust in Him. Rely upon Him for everything that you may need and begin to just call upon his name right now right where you are let's just call upon the name of the Lord tell him what you need tell him what you're going through tell him the the depths of your heart the pains of your heart express to him what you need in this season right now would you join me in prayer Heavenly Father we pray today God that you would strengthen our hearts. Lord, that you would cause us to remember that you are the strong and powerful creator God. That you have created all things, including me. And including my family members who, who need you. You have created all these things. And we believe. Once again, our faith is rising to believe that, God, you are who you say you are. You love us, and you have a purpose and a plan for each one of us. And, God, we believe that nothing is too hard for you, and you can turn our chaos back into order. And you can turn our storm back into peace. And I pray today for all of us and all of us who may be listening and tuning in on our YouTube channel. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you show yourself strong in the lives of your sons and your daughters. Show yourself strong and powerful. And we will give you the praise. We will give you the honor. We will give you all the glory for what you do in each one of our lives. 
And friends, today, let me just tell you, there, you may be here today and you have never confessed Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You've never repented of your sins or maybe you're here today and you have backslid and you are away from your Heavenly Father, from your Creator God. And God is calling you back today. I want you to begin that relationship fresh today. I want you to pray these words after me. And begin that journey. Just say this in your heart. Heavenly Father, I repent of being master of my own life. And for living separate from you. Come on, say it, church. I turn away from my sin. And I turn to you. And I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. I receive you today, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. And I welcome you, Holy Spirit, into my life to rescue me, to empower me, and to restore me back to intimacy with my heavenly father it's in Jesus name I pray everybody said amen amen Amen. can we praise the Lord